everybody video here for you today now my video on the marmus rock shelter a few days ago i talked about the flooding in this part of the world i mentioned randall carlson a few other things that had to do with the catastrophic flooding from this area of the world at the end of the last ice age and it's just staggering to learn how much water was flowing across parts of the world here one thing i did not mention that rock shelter video was this it was a native legend from the area it has to do with the Palouse Falls that I showed in that video. It says, for example, a native legend passed all the way down to the last inhabitants of the Palouse River Village and related to nearby residents in the 1930s, tells of the creation of Palouse Falls and other river fe features by the death throes of a giant beaver who died at the confluence of the Palouse River and the Snake River. So it seems they have stories going back in time, and this isn't the only one of giant creatures living in this part of the world, and we know they did, and they all went extinct about 13 to 11,000 years ago. But we have stories coming from these people that really tells the story of these large creatures dying off. And one of them comes from the area that I talked about the other day. One early native story passed down has giant creatures going into a tent and coming out on the other side much, much smaller than they were before. So this seems to tell the story of this megafauna die-off and only some of these creatures surviving in a much smaller state. Now, there are literally hundreds of stories coming from a thousands of years ago from the people who lived in this area of the world. And most of it has to do with the Great Flood, a central leader who usually saved himself in a great canoe. But how detailed are these stories? They seem to come from a history that we are now realizing happened, and Randall Carlson talks a lot about the flood in this area of the world. But how detailed are these stories? Can we find out maybe where something happened that led to these great floods? Well, let's go down to a lake here. We're going to go down to Manitou Lake, and there are many lakes called Manitou Lake. Let me just read here. Here is one story coming from a long, long time ago. One day when Nanabozo returned to his lodge after a long journey, he missed his young cousin who lived with him. He called his cousin's name but heard no answer. Looking around on the sand for tracks, Nanabozo was startled by the trail of the great serpent. He knew then that his cousin had been seized by his enemy. Nanabozo picked up his bow and arrows and followed the track of the serpent. He passed the great river, climbed mountains, crossed over valleys until he came to the shores of a gloomy lake. It is now called Manitou Lake, Spirit Lake, also Lake of the Devils. The trail of the great serpent led to the edge of the water. So that really got me thinking, could it be that simple? And of course, the serpent symbolism and the comet or an asteroid. Is there more to this story? This was a little weird. Could it be that simple? Could a native story tell us where maybe we had an impact event. Well, that seemed a little far-fetched to me, but the more I read, the weirder this got. And obviously, when you're talking about an impact event, you really can't claim to be 100% right. You can only bring up things that are interesting that people look into, and I know Randall's talked about a few sites, but if this was a place where an impact event occurred, of course, it's not gonna look like a normal crater if there was a lot of ice maybe a mile or two covering this, and that is all a weird story to me, but obviously a crater would not look like a normal crater if it hit an ice cap. But the more I read about this place and the more I looked, I thought this was worth bringing up because some things really stood out to me here. Now, obviously, if something impacted in this area here, massive flooding would have outpoured from this event. Is there any evidence of outpouring of water from this lake here? Well, going this way and going this way, there appears to be evidence of a massive outbreak of water. You can kind of see here from Google Earth, there's a lake here, and you come down this way, and there is just a large valley formed that way and that way. And you can really only see it from overhead. And I don't know if this is hard for you to pick out, but right here, Right here, this lake is evidence or the remnants of a massive flood and it comes right down this way. You can see it really good right here. 
border there, border there, just a massive outbreak of water happened. And it looks like the central starting point was this lake here, right here. The geography definitely seems to change right at the south part of the lake here. There is an area of earth that appears to be scoured. And this is pretty large. You can tell by the dark area here from here to here. You can see kind of like a wing pattern going down here and then it comes down this way and there's even a large river flowing out of the very south part of this outburst area, I'm gonna call it. Right down here, all the way around here, it looks like there is a massive outburst of water and this is over 30 miles across. I just thought this was worth bringing up once again. You see this area here that is different colored. Water was flowing down here. It's even right in the central part of this area here, there is a large river here, or a large river gorge at least. And you can see it perfectly right here. Talk about scale and variance, but a massive amount of water came out of here. It starts up by the lake there, Lake Manitou. This just got real interesting, the story. The name Manitou comes from the Great Spirit himself. Sometimes it's a good spirit, sometimes it's a bad spirit, but Asha, Manitou, the Great Spirit, I believe is where that comes from. But here you see the north side of the lake, massive amount of water came out here. Wells Lake is a remnant of a river that flowed out of the northwest part of the lake here. There are many Manitou lakes, but this one I just got drawn to for some reason. It was the first one I looked at, but the evidence of outburst flooding from this central area certainly got me more interested, but what's even more interesting about this lake, it has no fish in it whatsoever. It's about seven and a half miles, the longest line you can draw across this lake. No fish, it's extremely salty, and then it just, it just got weird to me. Here, info on the lake. Manitou Lake is a saltwater lake in the middle of southern Saskatchewan, west of Saskatoon, because the lake is endorheric. And what does that mean? It means it does not have an outflow. It's just a big basin without an outflow. This lake is in a basin. It has no outflow. Is that a hint to maybe the formation of the lake? It says once, about 110 years ago, the lake did overflow to the north this way that ancient gorge there. It's not very deep, but water did flow out this way once a long time ago. Then it did again about 100 years ago, a little over. This is a very strange lake, does not support fish life in Canada. That just seemed very, very weird to me, very salty. Would an impact crater look like this? Well, I think that's a question that's certainly interesting. Here is a lake in Tajikistan. It says this lake was caused by an impact event at 16 miles across. And it's fed just by a few streams here, just like the lake in Canada. But there is no outflow from it, just like the lake in Canada. And it is extremely salty and bitter, like that lake in Canada. Is this what an impact site would look like under the ice? The ice would have taken some of the impact force off of it, but just a little. It's coming in at the speed of a bullet. That's an ancient impact site, so this could be, I guess, just based on an eye test. Certain things we're adding up here. This is more of a mystery than I thought it would be, for sure. This is Little Manitou Lake right down here. This is Atlas Obscura. I've used them before. Little Manitou Lake, known as the Dead Sea of Canada, just filled with minerals and salt, this lake. It says, earliest known reports, a Little Manitou Lake comes from 1837. A tribe was fleeing a smallpox epidemic. Two members of the tribe were so ill, the tribe left them behind at the lake here. The two men dragged themselves into the lake, drank some of the water and bathed in it, and then were instantly cured. And the legend of this lake having healing powers was kind of born. Over eight and a half years, I've been doing videos. I've done more than a few impact videos. Here is a site from Africa, the Swang. Impact Crater Lake and salt is associated with a lot of these lakes that were formed by impacts. And it actually says here, the meaning, place of salt, the name of this place actually means the place of salt 
salt and these impact crater lakes are certainly associated. But I've thought for quite a while what an impact site would have looked like that hit the ice cap. I mentioned it first in the video from 2012. It seems these impact sites always have a central dome feature. Is that what we're seeing here? I'm just not sure. I think this is worth bringing up. Seems a lot of water came off this area a long time ago, and it shows up on Google Earth here pretty good, coming down this way and then the other way here. This lake doesn't have any outflow. That seems odd. It's in a basin. It did overflow once about a century ago to the north. This all seems very weird, doesn't have any fish. It's a salt lake like other impact crater lakes. A lot of things add up here, but I'm just not sure. It certainly resembled that lake I showed you that was formed by an impact. This is seven and a half miles across. The tales of the local people said a serpent went into this lake. Are they telling us something that we really need to know? That there was an impact event down here? 12,000 years ago that led to the reformation of this continent. It's my personal belief that there was many impact sites. We had a heck of a lot of ice that disappeared in unexplainable fashion. I just thought that was worth bringing up. Manitou Lake in Saskatchewan, was that just one of many points around here that got peppered about 12,000 years ago by an impact event? Well, that's my contribution to the story. Hope you thought that was informative, and you all have a very safe day.